As part of our scorecard building activity, we'll need to rate the impact of each risk in your organization. So why is it we need to assess that potential risk? Well, we need to understand what is the potential impact of that risk on the organization so that we can do things like know if that risk is important enough that we need to deal with it, understand how much effort we should be putting into it and when the effort surpasses the level of risk involved, and how closely leadership and the board need to monitor that risk. Now, when you think about risk scoring, the important concept is the risk your organization experiences is directly related to its strategy. So if we take an example of, say, uh, a risk of uh, potentially saturating your, your current customer base, that would be a high risk if your strategy is about growing your current customer base. Obviously, if they're already saturated, you have a high risk. But it would be a low risk if the stra strategy was something different, like grow markets or you know penetrate new markets. So the same risk element has a different impact depending on the strategy of the organization. Therefore, it's important that we understand the strategy when we go about rating the risks. So imagine if we begin to take this into account as we do this risk impact analysis. It would kind of look like this. What if we listed your strategic objectives down the left side of the page, along with their strategic importance, the weighting that we've talked about before? And across the top, your risk register. What are the different risk elements that you need to take into account? So in this example, let's say a small manufacturing company, one of their identified risks is the failure of their ERP implementation. Another one's new product failure, and another is labor problems. So to begin assessing the risk impact, what we really need to do is ask ourselves the question, if the risk element, in this case the ERP implementation failure, were to experience the worst case scenario, as bad as it could possibly be, what would that impact be on the strategic objective of, in this example, F1, profitable growth? So we're assessing each risk element against each strategic objective. And we're going to use the standard rating, you know, one is minor, up to five being catastrophic. So in this example, let's say we give it a score of, say, four. Then we ask the question, what's the impact of the ERP failure on the objective of low-cost producer? And maybe in this case we give it a three. Maybe ERP failure's impact on brand loyalty is, say, a two. In fact, you're going to go down and rate all of them and begin to get a very precise reading on what the impact of that risk element is against strategy. Now the interesting thing is here, you'll see that the impact is four, both on great customer service and continuous improvement. But because the weighting of continuous improvement is three times as high as that of great service, this four is going to have an ultimately a bigger impact on the success of the organization. Now, as a sidebar, later on, if you're going to change your strategy or change the scenario and this 16 gets reduced down to, say, a 4, and this 4 goes up to a 16, then the importance of these things would flip. In other words, this process allows you to do scenario planning to see what the impact of different strategies are on the risks. Anyways, back to the main story. We've now been able to evaluate the impact of this risk element against these strategic objectives, we then go on and do it for each of the other risk elements. And of course, what you'll see is each risk element has a different strategic impact footprint. So for example, on continuous improvement, ERP has an impact of four, new product only three, and there's no impact on continuous improvement if we have labor problems. So this way we begin to get a more detailed view of what the impact of each risk element is you'll eventually come up with your own scoring, but the traditional score of 1 to 5 has this sort of footprint. Now, as you're going through the group, you do need to manage their perception of risk. And there's a couple of things you need to be mindful of. First off, there's sort of what we call an availability bias, where people tend to overestimate the probability of something which is easy to understand or has just happened. Illusion of control. 
If you think that you can control a situation, you're likely to give it a lower risk score because it's controllable. Confirmation bias, which what happens is once people have formed an opinion, they tend to disregard all other data and only look for data that confirms their initial proposition. Of course, there's group think, and then finally there's a feeling of dread. If you're afraid of something, say a needle, you're going to skew things around risks that are, in your case, associated with a needle. So the idea is, as you're working with a team, you need to work through these biases to try to get a cleaner reading on that score of 1 to 5.